I gave you some numbers and I asked you to find to factor to find the biggest perfect square. I asked you to do the prime factorization and also factor completely. Now in this chart, I kind of mixed them up a little bit because to me, this is the one I would probably do first, factoring completely. And it doesn't matter which way you fill out the table, but so let's go ahead and do 60 first. Now factoring completely, let's see, one goes into 60 of course, and then two goes in 30 times, three goes in 20 times, four, hmm, goes in 15, uh, 5 goes in 12, 6 goes in 10, 7 does not go in, 8 doesn't go in, 9 doesn't go in, but 10 does 6 times. Now you see how that switched around right there? That means you're done. So factor completely. That's all the things that multiply to 60. Now you can write about it a list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30, and 60 if you wanted, or you could leave it like that. It's just fine. Now prime factors. Let's see here, prime factors, 60, well, 2 goes in 30 times, right? <clears throat> and, well, 3 goes into 30 10 times, and 10 is 2 times 5. So the prime factors, this is the scratch work. It's not the prime factorization. It's 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. That's the prime factorization. Now, there's another way you could write this. So I'm going to have to put it right above. You could do 2 squared times 3 times 5. Either of these would be acceptable answers. But if you only write one two, then it's not quite right because there are two twos. It's four times 15, do you see? All right, now, factor to find the biggest perfect square. So perfect squares, again, are numbers times themselves that you know, equal something. So like four is a perfect square because it's two times two. Now the way to find the biggest perfect square is actually to look at these complete set of factors. And that's all of the numbers that multiply together. And actually, 4 is the only one. So 4 times 15, because 4 is the perfect square. And where that's going to come into play is in the future, you're going to be doing a square root of 60. That's going to turn out to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 15. And the square root of 4 is 2. So this is your answer, but this is where it's going. OK, let's talk about 40. I'm going to do 40 again, 1 and 40. Oh, here's what I'd suggest. If you're watching this video for help, you pause it. You do 40, and then when you're done, we'll, do, we'll go over it, and then you do the same thing for, for 36. So anyway, 40. I'm going to start now. You pause the video and see how you got this. 40 is 1 times 40, 2 times 20, 3 doesn't go in, 4 does, 10 times. We got 5 and 8, and the next number would be 8 and 5. Now, I didn't say it, but I did check 6 and 7. They don't go in, but there's all of the factors. The prime factorization, well, 40 is is 4 times 10, right? 4 times 10. And that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. It's 8 times 5. So that would be 2 cubed times 5. Or if you wanted, you could write out all three twos like that. Either one of those, perfectly acceptable. Now, perfect squares. Hmm. Uh, 4, again, so 4 times 10. 4 is the biggest perfect square that's a factor. Now, when I look at the next one, mm, now, before I get going, um, when I look at this next one right here, 36 is kind of not so bad, you see? 36 is 6 times 6. 36 is the biggest perfect square. So that's it right there. And that reminds me, see this one right here? It's not prime. It doesn't belong in these lists. All right. So the prime factors, though, since it's 36 is 6 times 6, and each 6 is 2 times 3, that's 2 squared times 3 squared. You can write it out, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. That would be OK. And factoring completely, 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9. 5 doesn't go in, but 6 does 6 times. And that's how I know I'm done, because it switched around, you see? So anyway, that was short and quick. And um, I hope it was helpful. We do have a test coming up. So hope this helps you study. Anyway, till next time, thank you once again, and good luck.